the sea. The sea has strange ways of getting into your mind. It connects you directly to distant places. It has its own way of calling you to visit them by boat. There is a seat in a far off land that holds the souls of sailors. Of men we knew and respected, men who once sailed these, the seas of Skerries. This is the story of a visit to their paradise, to Tubermurray. Every sea journey starts on land, loading up supplies of food and navigational aids, books and charts, clothes and sleeping gear. Blue Air's double keel and its ability to sit on the sand makes the operation easier than most. I bring aboard all the heavier items on the evening before departure and store them in the different lockers on Blue Air in readiness for a very early departure the next day. Time to go to sea. Right, this is where we are and this is the route we're going to go on and we start forward there we go that's the route it should take us all the way to Tover Murray all going well and it's a beautiful sunny morning here in Skerries the water is coming in and we're very close to floating as I dropped the ground tackle I knew we had a long and complex passage ahead on two previous attempts to reach Tubbermurray, we had failed due to crew shortages on one occasion and to an injury on another. This time we would succeed. I had a cunning plan. We would go non-stop from Skerries to Tubbermurray, a distance of 200 nautical miles and an estimated journey time of 36 hours. We would sneak up on Scotland during the night. We would be there before the gremlins were out of their beds, set on frustrating us once again. The traditional route planning method of adding tidal vectors together wouldn't meet our needs. Our tides and routes were far too complex and I never trusted this method anyway. The only alternative was to plot a course for every hour of the trip. Fortunately, most of the tides ran in line with our direction, making the plotting easier. I then created chart plotter waypoints, not in the usual way of identifying turning points, but having a waypoint at each estimated hour of the passage, a good way to check our progress. I laid out the whole plan in tabular form and cross-checked it umpteen times. The best departure time for the plan to work was two hours before Dover High Water. We would sail non-stop, Scarries to Tubber Murray, setting out at 10.30 on this Tuesday morning, June the 18th, 2019. It was time to pick up my crew, Liam Deneen and John Furlong, and sail for Tubber Murray. We wasted no time in getting away. We left at uh, ten past ten from the harbour. Not bad. <laughs> Welcome aboard this uh, Welcome aboard. cruise to where? I don't know. <laughs> what was that last port we left? <laughs> 
Tony Golf? Tony Golf. That's it. Oh my god. That's it. My crew hasn't a clue. Right. We're taking Rock Hall. It's ours. End up. Rock Hall. How are you going so far then? Yeah. Right. How are you going so far? Very well. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly crashed into that tower. <laughs> Looking forward to dinner this evening. <laughs> yes, cooked by himself. Due to the very light winds we were motor sailing and because the winds were behind we were on a run with the sails in goose-winged position. Just across here is McCammon Rocks, you know how to see them, where my great-grandfather Edward Lennon wrecked a boat called Maid of Erin around 1880-something. Uh, it was on the way from Whitehaven to Balbriggan with coal bad stormy night, ended up here probably seeking refuge in Donahadee and himself and two others survived. Hey John, Hi. good way to spend the night. Oh, it's no better way. No better way. And if we're in the right part of the world as well, I would say. In the most beautiful country in the Yes, there's a man after you and heart. Have a look at the see over there. In the distance. We're just coming up to the Copeland, Copeland Island. And uh, little or no wind, so we're still motoring. Who wants to go for a swim and curry reckon? Not I. Eh? John, swim and curry reckon? Not today. Not today. <laughs> the swirling currents in this part of the Sound of Jura are a reminder of the proximity to the fearsome curry reckon, one of the most terrible stretches of water in the world. A flood tide heading west at over eight knots in this narrow space runs along a deep channel before hitting shallow water and then spiralling around a spindle of rock underneath the water to create one of the most fearsome whirlpools known to sailors.
last, but thanks to the wind coming from Cody Dragon. The sound of Luing links the sound of Jura to the Firth of Lorn, and the Firth of Lorn leads into the sound of Mull. The last gateway to our destination, Tubermurray, Isle of Mull, Scotland. Here we are in the Firth of Lorne, and we are forlorn because we are what this 22 miles from Tupper Murray, and there's the Isle of Mull. We're looking into what's he called Lost Spell, Spells, just across there. This is on the western side, or sorry, the eastern side of the Isle of Mull, the first of Lorne. Hello, Mr. Boyle. Yes. How are you doing? Yes. We have put foot on Scottish land.
in commemoration of our good friend James A. Dempsey, 1921 to 2003, Commodore Scary Sailing Club, Scarys, County Dublin, Ireland, whose passion for sailing these waters for over 40 years was exceeded only by his desire to endow his seamanship on those of us he introduced to the beauty of the Hebrides. Blue in the distant haze, afloat on the sparkling seas, quiet lie the isles asleep, lulled by the whispering breeze. Barra, Mull, Cullen say, Staffa, Iona and Rum, magic in their names, and they call to me to come. From the Hebrides by Francis Reed. Des Fraser, 1946 to 2013. Husband, father, friend, mentor. Commodore Scary Sailing Club, 1991 to 1992. Chairman Scary's RNLI, 2009 to 2013. Who shared with his great friends George O'Connor and Jim Dempsey Sr. a passion to explore the waters of the Hebrides with great camaraderie and good cheer. Their spirits will always be among us and at peace here in their spiritual home of the Western Isles. Sailor man, sailor man, God watch with you bell by bell. His wounded hands are on the wheel, little lad, and all is well. On the Greater Sea by Francis Ledwidge, 1887 to 1917. There is a seat in a far off land that holds the souls of sailors. <laughs> 